This is how you support black businesses. Do you hear me? You actually spend money with them, okay? That is how you support black businesses. Spend money with them like you would care about Gucci shades, like you would care about Prada. Make sure you spend your money with people who also are freaking accomplishing the extraordinary. They are a vertically integrated optical <laughs> like company. Like we're gonna say that word, those two yeah. words is vertically integrated from the front to the back to distribute, they do it all. Oh my God. prototype so that we get the sizing. Then we visit our factory in China. Those look so oh, we're super hands on. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I am like hands -on. so even like but um there's not there aren't any schools and there aren't any other like black women that are vertically integrated. You see a lot of people that are are people that have ivory companies but they're just buying glasses and putting their logo on it. And so Coco and I we've been like giving people like Factories. I'm not. We're not stingy with our knowledge at all with like how to start an eyewear company either. Because I don't want to be the only vertically integrated black eyewear company. And so I like, invite people to our office, and we're totally fine with sharing um, our factories. We've had people that want to start an eyewear company and they didn't know how to like actually use the, like the lingo and the words to factories. So like factories try to play them. So I'm like, put me in your email. I'll help you out because. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, they're so stuck on wanting to be the only one. And we don't want to be the only one. Coco and Breezy has such an amazing ring to it. Thank you. You hear that name, it's just like Coco and Breezy. It just, it just fits, it meshes. Like, was that y'all, is that y'all name? Y'all came up with that name? Our or? mom and dad came up with that name when we were little. So we were born Koreana and Brianna, but they've been calling us Coco and Breezy since we were like out the womb. I think they knew that we were going to do something. Like we're gonna be light workers and do, be healers in the world. They knew it, we knew it. I've known that since I was like a baby. There's like something in me, like this energy in me that made me know that I felt like we were different and I have no idea like what that meant, but I knew that we were gonna do something to shift the world. And that it was a feeling that we had like in our hearts. Um, at a young age, like I feel like at a young age we learned what empathy was, we learned what like team building was. And I think a lot of that had to do with being twins as well and having each other. And so we learned all this shit that like people don't learn until an adult, which is okay. Yeah. But it's like life is all about practice and people get into habits. And so we created those habits of like learning how to work as a team, learning how to be empathetic, learning how to be a giver, learning how to do things with, without expectations. We learned that at such a young age and we started practicing that young. And so now we just, it's clockwork for us now to have those traits. So. But yeah, Coco and Breezy, our parents, family, grandma, grandpa, everyone, they've been calling us that for since we were kids. Even in middle school, we went to a very suburban white school, and I'll be like, don't call me Coco and Breezy in front of my friends, that's ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that sounds so ghetto, mom and dad, don't call me that. And then once we hit seventh grade, we kind of like um, explored our individuality, and I was like, you know what, Coco and Breezy sounds dope. Like, I'm going to have all my teachers call me that, I'm going to have my friends call me that. So we've been there ever since. Wow. Mm hmm Did your parents understand what you guys were doing? Yeah, my like, mom. Like, I'm, I'm just trying this idea and I'm just trying to think of you talking to your parents like about creating eyewear. I just wonder what their freaking reaction was. Yo, to be real, I feel like my parents should either like write a book or they should do something about how to... No, they they honestly, wow. like my mom and dad, and I kind of brought this up at the dinner, like my parents did a great job at raising kids that knew they were going to be creatives, like out the womb. Like, and knowing their backgrounds of like my mom growing up in a very strict Puerto Rican household where she didn't really get the opportunity to do certain things. 
or very strict in not being able to go for her dreams. And my dad, who grew up during segregation in the South, like aunts and uncles, he got sprayed by water hose. He remembers when he was able to go to an ice cream shop, be the first black man wow. to buy ice cream. And then like growing up back in the day, like, you know, how black men had to, what they had to do back in the day because they couldn't get jobs. So it's like my parents didn't grow up being, my dad was an entrepreneur in his own right. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just how his life was back in the day. But like, so they didn't grow up being like creators, like knowing what starting a business was. But they knew that they wanted to break the cycle and um, kind of raise Coco and I to be individuals. And so they're like, all right, I'm going to give Coco and Breezy the yes to do whatever they want. So my mom and dad, like, ever since we were little, we, since we were like, my auntie even told me, since we were like two, she hated baby, she loved babysitting us, but she knew that we couldn't just watch TV. We wanted to learn, <laughs> and we were about to ask you a million questions, and like, we wanted to like, keep our hands busy making some shit. And so, um, so we've always been like that, and I think my mom and dad, they did such a great job at like, um, giving us that emotional support, because even though they couldn't financially support us, they gave us that emotional support. And so they even had a thing with us where like, if we wanted to like dye our hair, and I don't know, we were in seventh grade, red, blue, orange, piercings, dressed however we wanted to, they never said no to that. Cause they knew like we got good grades, then we weren't gonna rebel. And so I think a lot of times parents put their fears onto their children, when in reality our parents, they bring us to this world, but we're our, our own people. And so our mom and dad, they really allowed us to be ourselves. We're like, yeah. even though we looked like rock stars growing up, we were goody two shoes because they gave us the freedom to be ourselves. So we didn't have to go rebel. We didn't have to go do all these things behind their backs because we knew that I didn't want them to take our privileges away from like dyeing our hair, like being our true individuals. So for them, it wasn't a surprise that we wanted to start a company. It, for them, they're like, Coco okay. and Breezy been creative. What y'all got now? <laughs> Yeah, like Coco and Breezy been creative. I think for them, they were more so um, proud of us because we've been financially on our own since we were 15. Like haven't got a penny, dime, nothing from our family since we were 15 years old because our dad got sick. And so I think from there, they kind of, they already had this level of um, trust in us that we could do whatever we wanted to because we kind of grew up really fast at a young age yeah. having to start working. And so for them, I think we also had that mindset where I, I pay my own shit, so yeah. I'm gonna do me. You know what I mean? So it's like, it was like a balance of them respecting that we paid our own bills, we made our own money. So if we wanted to move to New York to start a company, they're like, you guys already set a goal and you always accomplish it. So like, go for it and do it. And if, you, if things don't work out, you can always come back home. Yeah. So they never, ever discouraged us, ever. Like, I know it's a lot, but I, I'm, my parents are just so, like, they're the shit for that. Because being a creative child, like, you don't, a lot of parents actually don't support that. And I know that's a privilege to have parents that actually, they're, we didn't go to college. And we enrolled, but it wasn't for us. But they didn't push that on us to be like, well, you have to go because X, Y, and Z. They're like, okay, go to New York. Yeah. And of course, when we first moved to New York, we moved here with less than $500 each. They were nervous, but they knew that we were gonna figure it out. And I haven't had a job since. You know, like my last job was at the mall, working at, um, it was actually full circle, because we just uh, modeled in this Betsy Johnson campaign. Don't tell me you worked for at Betsy Johnson. Girl, we used to sell Betsy Johnson. We, so let me tell you the story. Yeah. So we, used work, <laughs> so we, used to, we used to work at this store called um, Demo in Metro Park, and they, they had Be Betsy Johnson bags. And we, I remember I bought my little first Betsy Johnson bag with my little employee discount. And then, <laughs> yep, and then um, when it was time to move to New York, that was like, in my head, my first little designer bag, we had to sell that bag to like pay for our plane ticket to move oh to New York. Oh my God. And now, Betsy's paying us to be in her campaign. That deserves a round of applause. Oh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of full circles that's like crazy. that. Yeah. yeah, so my mom, that's what she called me to remind me today, like, yeah, we reflect on these type of things. Now here's my thing, mm -hmm. like, the f your parents were afraid of y'all moving to New York City because there's no guarantee that you're going to have any level of success. Yeah. Obviously, for many people that moved to New York, they still haven't seen success or they're <coughs> trying to figure it all out. Some, yeah. some of them got to move back home, stories mm -hmm. that we've heard. It just didn't work out. Yeah. So, obviously, there was something different that y'all had mm -hmm. already instilled inside of you to get you to this point. Like, yeah. what was that? Sacrifice. What, what was that? It was willing, like the willingness to sacrifice. I think mean, people want to be so comfortable 
it's like in Minnesota, you can like, in Minnesota, for the amount that you pay for a room in New York, you get like a townhouse. Yeah. So people are so caught up in that lifestyle that they want to live at the moment versus yeah. the lifestyle that they want to build up to for the future. And so I think for us, when we first moved here, we were, even though we were struggling, I didn't, in my head mentally, I didn't look at it as a struggle. I looked at it as part of the process. So like we or lived, even just like in a little adventure for you and your sister to try to accomplish. Yeah, like I never, now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I never looked at it as like, it was a struggle, but people put the negative connotation and negative energy towards that word. And I, we always looked at it as a positive. It being like, yeah, we're struggling, but we're about to figure this shit out. Like, I love problem solving. Give me a problem, I'll figure it out. And so, um, so that's the thing. It's like the, having that mentality of understanding that you are going to have to sacrifice. Like, back in the day when our friends were out here getting, like, appetizers, drinks, dinner, Coco and I were sharing the meal in 2009. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm putting my money towards our business so we can build. And when we were, when all the friends were like leaving our house, going to the club, we were like in the kitchen making glasses in the, in the same place that morning, in the same place at nighttime, when everyone got back from the club. So it's like using our time wisely back in the day, like we were just like super focused. And also I think that a lot of people, they get so caught up in the success and so they get so excited about something successful, but they don't praise the same amount of, um, they don't put the same amount of energy in like the times where there is a downfall. Yeah. And for me, I'm like a very grounded person. So like I try to look at anything that's like all like the successful times and all like the times that are challenges, I look at them both like this, like eye to eye. So that way I can like not be overly excited and never be overly like sad about something. I think that's what's kept us um, going because I like to stay grounded in any type of situation. And I think too, you had a, a built-in co-signer. And I think oh that's I think that's in, important for people to know because um, I just personally remember, I remember feeling so alone mm -hmm. in the beginning because it was just me and my dad. And so Sprinkler Jesus was already super successful. Mm -hmm. And because people knew about Sprinkler Jesus, I knew that I actually had a prototype or an example of what a mobile application could do for your business. Right. So we actually, with the money that we made from Sprinkler Jesus, mm -hmm. we bought the app company that built my app. Oh, wow. And so we started making mobile apps for small businesses. And I literally, I tell this story all the time, like, I legit created like five, six different emails and pretended to be all of these people to make up this company from right. app design to customer service. I was 50 million different people. Wow. And I remember one day and I probably put 250 apps in the app store by myself before I met my husband. Wow. And I remember one day I had got my wisdom teeth pulled and my dad was like, oh, do you need anything? Um, you know, I pop some perks, right? Mm -hmm. All the right reasons. <laughs> and I just remember because I was so alone, mm -hmm. work was the only thing and my business that didn't disappoint me because the outcome was always a reflection of what I actually did with my mind and with my hands. Yep. So I remember sitting in the bed and I'm swollen, my wisdom teeth pulled out, they actually nicked a nurse, so I can't feel the left side of my tongue anymore. And I remember sitting there and I'm literally busting out five, six, eight apps and just just three days wow. but I remember feeling so alone mm. but yet I felt like because I was so alone that was my standard for when I had a team mm -hmm. so you can't tell me mm -hmm. what I can and cannot do because yep. I've seen it when it's all I had to do yep. and so I want to know that moment for you when you looked at your sister mm -hmm. and was like yo we got something to sell do you re was there a I moment? That. Yeah, I was. It was before we moved to New York, and we were like sitting on my mom's <laughs> living room floor, and I was like, because when we made the backstory is that we started making glasses for ourselves because we got bullied, and so we would make glasses for ourselves to give us this level of confidence. That's when MySpace was popular. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were like the MySpace twins. Like everyone knew us on MySpace, but when people were asking, where "Can they buy them from?" I was like, "Coco, we can actually make this into a business." Like we can do it, and she was. She's always more. She's more um, strategic, and she analyzes things. Me, I'm like, let's go. Like it's a balance. I'm like here. I'm the risk taker, and she thinks about it. And so we meet in the middle, and um, but I, I totally 
had that feeling where we both felt like we were alone, but we were alone together, so it was an advantage. Yeah. Because um, anytime I saw a little bit of her feeling down, I could go like, we got this girl. Like we're constantly doing that. Every single day is like picking each other up. But um, back in the day, we, we were that for each other, for sure. Yeah, but I, I think that's one of the things that people they're afraid of that process. Mm -hmm. It's not so much more the trials and tribulations, because people good. We go throughout the, our entire life. No one's life is perfect. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens is when you don't have someone by your side to go through it, go through it with you, yeah. or like, you know, it's so much more taxing because you mm -hmm. feel like you're alone, not realizing. And it's so crazy because I was, um, we were consulting these people, and she came in and she was just complaining about the process. I said, girl, you know, it's not like a God thing or like the enemy's trying to attack you. Like, yo, it's just, that's called building a business. I mean, like, she was like three months in too. <laughs> yeah, and we're like, like, like wow. yeah, and she was like, oh, well, you know, I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm, you know, I'm frustrated. <laughs> I'm, you know, uh, I don't know if this, this consult's working. And I'm like, hold on, listen, first off, what I'm not gonna do is try to convince you to believe in yourself. Cause I, I just can't do that. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. And two, you were, I said, how long were you willing to give college? She said four years. I said, how long were you willing to give high school? She said four years. I said, how long have you been at that job you're working at? and you've waited for the process, right? So when building a business, the enemy's not attacking you, God's not trying to teach you a lesson, it's the process and procedure of yeah. how can I get people to believe in me mm -hmm. and, and, and find that how worthy enough to give me so money. Worthy. Yeah, and I'm just like, yo, you need to chill. Like, after three months, what? Like, are you psycho crazy? And so when did you feel like, you were like, yo, Coco, like, this is working. Like your first deal or your first call that you were like, yo, this is it. Like, this is good. Oh, um, so I have this thing in my life where I feel like every time something happens, I'm like, I always feel that way. Even like, like say like, I'll tell you why. Because for me, I feel that way because I'm always showing gratitude and I'm like, I want something even better. So even to this day, like even when we DJ, I'm like, that was our best gig. And somebody was like, you say that all the time. I'm like, if I'm not saying that, that means wow. I'm not moving forward. You know what I'm saying? I want to always say that. I want to always feel like it's my best when I'm doing it because that means I'm doing something greater than last time. And so... Um, and you feel better about it. Yeah. You feel like self-approval, like, approval, like wow, exactly. I did better than last time. Yeah, so um, the first time, I don't know, every day is something so, it can be something so small. I think the first time that I actually felt that was when we made the decision to move to New York and like not knowing where we were gonna live, not knowing, not having any family, knowing that we didn't have any like family money to be like, I can't pay my rent next month, you got me mom? Like not knowing all that, but actually putting ourselves out there, I think that's a bigger thing, is that a lot of people have these ideas, these dreams, but they won't, um, they won't go with their hearts and their intuition when it first comes. You know what I'm saying? Like when that door opens, we, we slid it right in, we, we were in there as soon as, as soon as we felt it. But I think a lot of times people, they get that feeling, but there's something either their friends or like their family, they put their, they allow those people to put their fears onto them and they don't just go for it. But I think that we get this like light where we feel, we have that feeling in our hearts that we're like, let's do it. But a lot of people don't act on it and they're afraid to fail. And that's, under, it's not for every, I realize that I can't push my ways onto everybody. I used to push so my true. ways onto people. Like, like, yo, you can do it. Just believe in yourself it. and it's like, Whoa. It's not for everybody. Oh like, and it's fine. Like some people are meant to have a nine to five and that's totally okay. If you're happy, go for it. But I, I, I learned that I can't push my ways onto other people. It's not for everybody at all. Your first biggest check. Talk to me about it. My first biggest check? Y'all's biggest check. Your first one and you're like, In Dude. life? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let me start from when I got my first check when I was younger. When okay. I, like my, my first job, Lee and Chin, I thought it was it, $150. <laughs> like, I remember it was my first job. Yeah. And I'm like, I buy my school supplies, my own school clothes. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I'm up, <laughs> going to what seal, going to the mall. I was doing it. And for me, that was a big deal because like Coco and I put our little money together. I remember I cashed it. I threw it up in the air in my bed. I'm like, Mom, I got my oh own money. Oh my God, acting a fool. Yeah, so I was so excited. But we have always, we were always penny pitchers. But I would say like our first actual like real, like our big partnership that we did, I felt good about it because I negotiated it. It was about like five years ago. And I was excited. I was like, dope. Like, 
this is I know my value because before that we had said yes to something that wasn't close to that amount of money and after that oh yeah no talk about that because I feel like that's like we talk about business and we talk about all the good moments and the bad moments but sometimes we're not even specific enough for someone to learn from it. Yeah. So like, what do you feel like that first, don't say the name if you don't want to, where you felt like you made a bad decision and why? Um, so there is, and I wouldn't say it was a bad decision actually. It yeah. was a great decision because everyone thought we got paid a lot of money from it. So we were on this billboard. I'm not gonna say the company because I'm, I'm gonna do a future deal with them. So I'm gonna put them <laughs> on blast. But um, we did this worldwide billboard. It was before we had agents, before we had management. We, we had no idea. They hit you us guys up. were doing it by yourselves. Yeah. And so they hit us up about being in the campaign. It's one of the biggest clothing companies out right now. And um, and so we're like, hell yeah. And they're like, oh, we can fly you guys to LA, um, get you a hotel. I'm like, okay, bet. Now that's normal for us. But back then we're like, like hey, that's yeah. included. Like, like, you better do that. Yeah, write it, everything now. But like, but back then we're like, heck yeah, let's do it. So, um, and I realized that they didn't have a budget. But for us, we're like, okay, well, they're flying us to LA, getting us a hotel. We ran that bill up because I'm like, they're not paying us, so putting everything on the room. <laughs> and um, I didn't realize that it was gonna be a worldwide campaign where like people were like, oh, I'm at so and so store in Thailand. I see you guys on the billboard. Wow. Oh, I'm at da 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 in this country. I see you guys on the billboard. But the great part about it is that we finesse. We we're like, we're not doing it unless we put our glasses. Unless you okay. wear our glasses, and so we wore our glasses in this big campaign, so it looked like a Coco and Breezy billboard. It did. Wow. And, um, and what was this? When? When? It was about five years ago, wow. I think. Maybe even six now. <coughs> Maybe no, five years ago. And so. Um, so it almost looked like you guys' yeah. ad. So you guys leveraged Always. this huge company to yep. go ahead and make sure. If they didn't have a budget, you leverage yep. and negotiate, okay, as long as our products are in it, yeah. we're good. So after that though, when people saw us in that campaign, I looked at it in a positive way where I'm like, okay, cool. Now, no one knew that we, did, no one knew that we didn't get paid from that, but now when we started doing other brand partnerships, other campaigns, it set a huge standard. Yeah. Wow. And um, it also made me understand my value and like to not be afraid to ask. So Coco's not allowed to negotiate because... Yeah, tell me about your roles. Why? Why She's she... not allowed to negotiate. <laughs> Why? Because, argue. because she gets a little nervous. Okay. I don't get nervous. I'm a savage. You're a cluesy. Yeah. I love cluesies. And the thing is, I'm real chill. Like, I make you feel like we're besties. Like, and I also make you feel like I know my value. I say things that make... My team feel really uncomfortable sometimes. Coco kicks me under the table, and I do it with a straight face. And okay, tell me the last kick under the table. What the hell did you say? So we're. What was the last so kick under the table? No, yeah, please. What was the last kick under the table that you gave her? Um. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. When we were. Um, I'm not gonna say the name, but there's a company that reached out to us last minute, and they wanted to do an event with us, and they wanted our eyewear. They offered for us to possibly like do the music portion as well. And they wanted all these things from us, but the event was in one week. And somehow they just couldn't find budget for all the ask. But they had budget. They had budget, but it wasn't what it wasn't what we normally did. And so Breezy was like, um, we're not doing it if you guys can't do it for this amount. And, and I was like, in my head, I'm like, this is a big client. Like, shut up. I'm like, shut up, Breezy. <laughs> it's in so it's in good. one week. The amount was so good, but was it my I know what we're valuing. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Breezy, it's in one week. Like, no. And she's like, we're, we're like this, snatching the phone back and forth. Literally, we were in the Put conference it room, <laughs> putting it on mute, snatching. I'm like, Breezy, stop. Breezy was like, she grabbed the phone and she's like, yeah, if you guys can't bring it up a couple extra, then we just can't move forward. And I'm like, and finally, two times, they found, the first, time, the first time they found budget, they added, more, they added more, but it wasn't what she wanted. I'm, like, I'm sorry you guys, this is a really good opportunity, but I have to tell you that it's just really low for what we're used to. I really want to build you guys, but this is it's tough. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. And Coco's like, Breezy, we're going to, they're like, oh, well, we have no more budget and blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. An hour later, they emailed us. They found ten more thousand dollars out of somewhere. They always, right? And what yeah, did you say? Always. What did you think? I'm like, Breezy was like, you're not getting none of that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like understanding our value. And I think that, and it's so, 
it's a way to do it because it's like I'm aggressive in a way where it's not off-putting and it's very nice but I also know I just know our value and I know how to ask for it and I'm and I'm okay with also people saying no they can't provide our value too and, and I'm okay with them like passing yeah. If they need to move on to the next person, that's fine. I know when Coco and Breezy first started 10 years ago, we were okay with taking certain amounts because we needed to build. But now we're at a different point in our careers where like, we just have to say no to money sometimes if it's not good and if it's not worth our time. Now, no, what, what, what gauge is that though for you? What like, gauge? you know what I mean? Like, how do you say, oh, I know that I'm worth this? Well, I think it's more about does it go with our all? It, it's one is, it, do we want to build a relationship with this company or person? And then two, does this company or person actually go with our ultimate goal. Yeah. In the past, when we were younger, in the beginning stages, we were just saying yes to this, this, and that to pay the rent. But it didn't really go with our bigger story. And so, so now... Mm -hmm. if, um, if it aligns with what we're, if it aligns with our, our bigger goal. Yeah, so now it's more about are we building something and is it part of the Coco and Breezy DNA? So I don't think people understand the importance of vertical integration, and so for us, we just realized business can turn at any point in time, mm -hmm. just with the ups and downs of yep. culture oh, and yeah. technology oh, okay. and time. Yep. And something that was so, so yeah. important to us is how can we make sure we maximize as much space as possible in the process yep. so that if something goes down, we can essentially bounce off, exactly. bounce off other areas. For example, something ever happened to the brand, you 100% can console. You 100% can manufacture. You yep. 100 like you have so much information that mm -hmm. that gives you the ability to be the liaison in the industry, yep. not just with your brand. Yep. And that's where a lot of entrepreneurs have not gotten yet. Yeah. Is have you impacted the industry mm -hmm. and yeah. you have. Yep. And so for us one way that we wanted to do it knowing that we our end goal is real estate and finances, mm -hmm. right? So we knew that, okay, let's go with all these need-based businesses from credit repair, um, taxes, mobile applications, and let's then go ahead and funnel that into property, mm -hmm. which with the property, we're no longer renting yep. uh, a space and then we have this huge, huge overhead every single month to pay rent yep. that maybe if the business took a little bit of turn, what the hell are we gonna do? Yeah. So we took the business model of McDonald's and so we actually started owning yeah. the properties in which our businesses were established in and yeah. the commercial space. And then what do we do? We make sure we give living quarters to our people, to like our, our team, our wolf pack. So if anything went wrong, we made a promise to our team that you would never have to be scared about where you live. That's dope. And you, we both know that that's a huge problem yeah. is our just our sustainability and livelihood. Like, do we have somewhere to lay our head? Yeah. Or are we going to pay rent? And so we wanted to make that promise not just to our team, but the family. And it's like, okay, well, with these businesses, let's go ahead and acquire as much as possible mm -hmm. so we're not renting advertisement. We're not renting space. Because mm -hmm. even with, like, the Facebook ads and Instagram ads and stuff like that, we're not paying to acquire the data, we're just paying to use it. We can't even go back and use it again if we wanted to, we gotta pay them again. Yeah. It starts getting very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. And so, I would love to know, was vertical integration for you guys just happen to stumble upon the process and then you found, because I feel like sometimes well, we'll do something and not know because we didn't go to college, so we don't know the right words. Yeah, exactly. Did you guys knew what you were doing or you're like, crap, hold on. I didn't know I was vertically integrated until I heard another eyewear company and they were like, we're vertically I, I oh, vertically sure. integrated eyewear company, we do this, 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 and I'm ahead, I'm like, hold on. Like, what did you do? Did you Google it? No, I, I was, yeah, I was watching like a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you start. About their company. And no, but I wasn't even like looking it up. I was just wow. like kind of doing market research. And when they're saying everything that they do, and I'm like, we do that too. Like, damn, we're vertically integrated. That's, That's a huge insane. accomplishment, That's bro. Crazy. Yeah. No middleman. No middleman at all. Not even a middleman to the factory. Like direct every everything major. 100%. And so, um, yeah, and I think you should think. I think you should talk about. I know I'm like on the side adjusting glasses, but um, I think what we should talk about too is that like we've had times, you know, with the way we look, people can never. When we're out and about, people can never fathom mm -hmm. that like we have a real company when we tell them about our eyewear company. That you were smart enough and badass yeah. enough to create something extraordinary. Exactly. Yeah. So there's been times where we've been around men 
And they're like, oh, you have an eyewear company? So do you like go on Alibaba and buy wholesale glasses <laughs> and just like sell them? I'm like, no, we're a vertically integrated company. We design everything <laughs> in-house. And we have an in-house design team. Yeah, and no, we oversee no, all of our production. No, you said, yep. <laughs> and we, we do our 3D samples to test out sizing. Wow. And that's what we do. You know, and I think that sometimes it's difficult <laughs> it's true. for people to like fathom that we do that. And I do know that like on our, on our side, there aren't a lot of places that you can learn how to do eyewear design and actually learn the production process. So we actually teach people and like we help mentor a few people as well. Tell me you guys' biggest freaking mistake. Um, like giving someone you, too much of our time. What do you mean? There's somebody that we oh, help there we're just so we're so oh, no, giving okay. and so like not afraid to give our knowledge that we um we were a little too hands on with somebody and they took advantage of our kindness type of a thing and it just went left. And they were, I think that when someone is willing to help you, you have to help yourself. And so I think we were helping them a little bit more than they're, they were helping themselves. And they were having way, they had high expectations. And we were giving so much. And I'm like, damn, you still have high expectations? And we're like giving you gems. I'm like, no one taught me none of this shit. And we're yeah. literally giving you the gems that we learned in, in the past like eight years. And so I think that was one of our biggest mistakes. It's being more, um, still being giving, but doing it in a way where we're, we're not like, give, we're not giving all the sauce to someone who doesn't want to help themselves. You know what I'm saying? I think that was one of our biggest mistakes. And what about like a financial mistake? Was there anything that you guys messed up? I hear horror stories all the time about like, yeah. oh my gosh, we made these glasses and they came oh, back yeah. and they were this and we wasted money. Like yeah. what was a horror story? Well, especially if you she were looked back money. like she's terrified yeah. to say. It changed our life, actually. It changed our life. And um, we spent our last bit of money. This was like, what, six years ago? We had spent our last bit of money um, to make this production for some distributors in Korea. And we were so excited, we were like, oh, okay, we did the math, we're like, we're gonna profit this amount, so let's just spend all the money on production, it's gonna be a for sure guaranteed order. They got the product, and everything was damaged. And they they called us, and they were like, what? it was like $50,000 worth of product, and they are like, we're gonna have to ship all this back to you guys. And we were like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? And what I can say is that we didn't worry, Literally, that was the first time ever in our life where we were like, how are we going to pay our rent? How are we going to eat next month? And that was the best story because Coco and I, we sat down and we we're like, all right, we have to figure out how we can make our quality better. We have to figure out how we can make a tighter supply chain. Most importantly, we need to figure out our mindset and figure out, we figured out that we were spending too much time on things that weren't making profit. We weren't spending enough time on high priority things. We were spending too much time and saying yes to too many things that weren't adding up to the ultimate goal. Yep. And so we went one month where like, we were- What do you mean though? What, what does that mean? Like what's something that you, you had to reanalyze and say, okay, that's not a freaking priority. Like what, are, what um, are you talking about? Even like, say if someone was like, oh, I wanna do a photo shoot with you guys so you look cool, but there wasn't a budget. We used to be like, oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're saying, and then we had to be like, okay, that's not part of the ultimate goal. No to that or even um, certain partnerships, or even not even taking it, not, not taking advantage of other opportunities. At that time, we were like, we're only going to be eyewear designers, but people were hitting us up to, to model in campaigns and to do brand partnerships. But we were so stuck on um, not wanting to be all over the place. But then once we realized that we, we can actually do all these things and it can align to like the ultimate goal, we figured out the formula for it, so that way we weren't looking like we were here, here, and here, and everything looked streamlined. So like literally, we just stepped back and we went from one month, I even had to go on food stamps for that one month. And I tell this story because I'm like, that one little mindset, like we literally changed our whole shit up. Like I am so grateful for that story because when we lost that order and we had to go on food stamps for one month, our next mindset, the next month we like did like 10,000 in sales because it was all the mind, we just like shifted our whole mindset and we said no to things, saying yes to things and it's been up ever since that month. So like we had one, that one down month and I'm so grateful for that. And I share that, that kicked y'all in high gear. Yeah, and, and that's why I always say that people don't, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's cool. like people don't appreciate those moments. Like yeah. those are the moments where you're supposed to step back, analyze the situation and figure out what's next. 
Because I'm gonna be honest, it's not a, just about being cool for something no more for no. y'all. Y'all are real business women, and yes. so I want to know. It, it's a whole different situation when, like you said, I can book y'all to be the face of something, but now when I'm booking y'all to act, because y'all actually got resources that you we can need. You can DJ. You can buy. You can use our property. It's insane for the retreat. Yeah. You can. <laughs> Use our knowledge for like marketing, call them to like consult with you on marketing stuff. You can use this to. How do y'all feel? You know what? Honestly, I have imposter syndrome. And I'm still trying to get over it. Seriously. I was just having a conversation with Damaris about it. And we we're like, we live, me and Damaris, because Damaris is dope as heck. She's a, she's a, um, like a superhero now with this new show. I forgot the name of it, but. <laughs> but it's really, really dope. She's, She's dope. We met her through prints, if that gives you some context. I kind of told but, um, but me and Damaris were just talking about how like, every day we say that we're living in like this fairy tale. And it we're like, fairy tale. we're living in a movie, but when are we going to actually feel like this is our life? Yeah. I mean, I think it's because we grew up so different. Like, we grew up like not having a lot of resources. We still go back home to our family, to them not having a lot of resources, but we're living this like, this book and this, this movie, and life. which is so crazy, and you almost feel bad because you're like, "Damn, I'm living this life, but X, Y, and Z isn't," you know. So I think that I'm still trying to like sit in and like really understand it because I'm not, I'm never used to it at all, like never, right? Are you used to it? Mm -mm. Yeah, I think because we're still dealing with like every with our family, we're still dealing with things that Black people in America. Deal with. deal with. So it's like it's not yeah, like it erased everything. The success like, erased yeah. everything. It's like yeah, we have a business. We're like working with some of the top people. But like on our personal side, like our brother just got murdered two years ago. So we have to go back three to years three ago. years ago. So like we have to go DJ somewhere and then fly back to Texas to go to the trial. To the trial. So it's like people don't realize that we're still living shit that black people it live is, every I'm single so day. Real. So we're like talking to this one of the biggest sunglass chains. And like, I'm the person that like, I like to be real. So you know how sometimes when people have excuses and they're like, oh, you know, I can't do this because of, I don't know, people just make excuses. For me, I'm like super transparent. So we were trying to schedule dates on like when we're gonna do our pop-up shop at their store and for Art Basel. And I had to be honest with them. I'm like, to be honest with you guys, like I just got a call that I have to be in Texas for a trial from like my brother getting murdered. And like, I don't know if we can do this date, but I'll double check. I know that it was like all these corporate people, like the guy who's the CEO of like Solstice, he bought Solstice from Exotica, like it's a huge company. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna let them know that I'm still human. I'm still going through some shit. Even though we're successful and doing all this stuff, we're still dealing with like real life stuff. And so literally I'm on the call with all these corporate people and I wanted to let them know exactly like what I was going through so they can understand that we're not just trying to push the date for no reason, but this is the reality yeah, of our life and that's just what it is you know but i think that as millennials us building businesses that's what's given us the ability to grow so quickly and so fast because we're not afraid to continue to be ourselves in spite of building and doing the extraordinary yeah and so i commend you on that like y'all see with my content i don't hide much because if i don't what'll end up happening is I'll become this person that I can't even recognize, which then yeah. that means that I'm operating and just doing for the results of money, but yeah, I'm not doing it because of my purpose. Yeah, I don't want ever I don't ever wanna be that person. Like I don't ever wanna feel like like the thing is, even like for social media, I don't ever wanna feel like I need to post something to get like I'm gonna do something that's not me to get likes. I already know Coco and I put up a little body picture, it'll get a whole bunch of likes. I'm not that girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm all about showing up your body, I'm all about it, but I'm just not that girl to be doing the swimsuit photos. But I know for a fact, I know what we could post yeah, to get sure. high engagement. I know exactly what the formula is, but I know that just, that's just not who Coco and I are. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's certain things that, and I also do know that we, we want to continue to be transparent about our story because I don't want people to only see the success, but I want them to understand how we did it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to only yeah, see. I also want them to know like what we went through and that we're those because I think that when we first got to New York and got into the industry, a lot of people thought like, oh, your parents must have some like connections, connections or they have money or you guys must have came from like, affluent, an, like yeah, or like someone came into our office once and they're like, oh, so did like your dad give you a loan or something? And I was like, you pay our dad's bills. <laughs> yeah. My, my brain was my yeah. loan. I think, I think, Google I, was my loan. Right. <laughs> so for us, it's important that like other young black women that are going through certain things see that like we're those same women 
and we had to like figure out the resource. We had, we had to figure out like we had to build our own networks of people that we wanted to be around to learn. You know, so it's important for us for people to know that. Wait, wait, hold on, because I, I, I no, 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 I wait, wait, because I have, I have, I have, no, something real quick, because I know y'all gonna kick us out soon. No, because um, uh -uh. this, this is like, <coughs> I love this. Because I have a very honest question in this yeah. world, and yeah. only because I'm looking at the name on your shirt, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here and wondering that in this stage of your business, yeah. the numbers are undisputable. You're successful. You can build a brand. You can market it. You can build a damn business, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'm even looking at my success, my numbers in my bank account and what I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. Like I am gonna toot my own horn because I've yep. worked my butt off to. Mm -hmm. I've built a platform outside of social media with over 10 million people on it. Mm -hmm. I have literally access to click a button and speak to 10 million people and tell them what I want, when to do it and how I want because they 100% trust the brand. Mm -hmm. I have a cult-like following. Yep. Any religion, they're going to consider it a cult-like following. Yep. Sprinkle Jesus is the largest app in the freaking world mm -hmm. when it comes to Christianity. My question is, is it that I'm not looking for it? Or to me, I, I see the Forbes covers. I see these articles about these extraordinary women like Emily, like the Sophias. And I'm curious to myself, mind you, I've never went to go attempt to raise capital or anything like that. It's something we've never done. Mm -hmm. Am I being, am I, am I psyching myself out that it's easier for them as white women to, to go ahead and pull something like that off, like asking people for money and them being willing to give it? I'm like, I hear these stories and maybe they're not telling the whole thing, but right. yo, I've built a multi-million dollar brand mm -hmm. by myself lying and letting people know that there was multiple people on my team and it was just me. Mm -hmm. I've accomplished the extraordinary and I'm just, why are people looking to throw money at me? Like, I, I got the sauce. I know that I can make it happen and I did it with nothing. I did yeah. it with a broken iPhone and my laptop. And so now that you guys are sitting here going in this space, yeah. I'm just trying, is it as easy as they making it seem? It's is not, it not easy? Oh like, God. especially as black women, like I, I need to know what's going on it's, in this world. It's only 1% of, of women, right? No, I don't think it's 1%. It's like a couple percent. It's a couple, whatever the percentage is, only a fraction of one percent um, of one, only a fraction of one percent of black women have ever raised more than a million dollars. And when I tell you that, it's just, it's really hard. It's it's really frustrating. I cried. I'm like looking at Emily's story, and I'm like, girl, what do you have that we like? I'm just trying to understand. I think girl. the bigger part one is that we as at least I can't speak for all black women. I'm only gonna speak for me with having like the trauma that I have and like me having a dad that grew up during segregation. And so, you know, like your, your family trauma, it goes back onto you. So imagine okay. like having a dad who went to a segregated school, grew up during civil rights, they weren't hiring black people. Now all of that stuff got passed on to me. And so like, we didn't have the resources of knowing that like, oh, I have an idea. I'm gonna go to my friends and go get angel money. And that's just how, like the idea might suck, but like I have friends to ask money. And they're taking a risk. No, I mean, it, that it literally. Was a, that was a calculated <coughs> decision. Yeah, that was no but, risk. No, but I'm just. No, but but I'm yeah, saying in my in my mind, like. No, but with those people, they know that they can yeah. have an idea yeah. without having a product, and, without understanding the product market fit, right. and they have the resources for people to like just give them the money for the risk. Yeah, for them yeah. that not was not knowing yeah. that but if it's going to be successful, thing, but that's thing. them having the resources of knowing they can do that. And for us in the black community, we don't talk about money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We talk about, like, we pride ourselves on bootstrapping. And we pride ourselves on, like, using our own money. Using our own money. And when really, like, I learned, like, my boyfriend is freaking amazing. He, like, he was like, Coco, you guys, your brand is so valuable. The only thing we're missing is that we know that, like, we had X amount of funds to help fully scale. We can really grow, right? But you have all these other companies that are ventured back, and they have a product that, like, they pay to get like branding. They pay to for the culture, but what they have, what they do have, is like a whole bunch of money to put into like digital marketing yeah. to buy their customers hire the right and hire the right experts. And so, um, so my boyfriend was just like, "You guys need to like raise." Literally for like two years, he kept telling us, and me and Breezy had anxiety to like even talk about the conversation because I'm like, I'm not gonna go in and go speak to investors. Like, I'm not gonna ask someone for money. Only because in my head, I just had this whole and I like. I asking nobody for nothing. Yeah. yeah, and he was like, no. For him, it was frustrating him because he saw so he saw just like he just saw gold in front of him, and he's like, 
why aren't you guys going out? So we finally started taking meetings. Like, I think we've been attempting to raise for like a few months now, but like it's been so challenging. But what I do is I have a, we have a community of friends who are founders as well that have either like raised money already or they've sold their companies or they're just in this space. And I think that's been extremely helpful because everyone's each other's cheerleaders. Yeah. They're like, that investor said no, F them. Go to the next one. That yeah. investor's taking too long. Well, let them know that you're about to close even though you're not. Like, they're just yeah. saying, they just say everything. But like, we had our first um, experience where, I don't know, I feel like when we first started taking meetings, it was, it was horrifying for us. And now we walk in and we think about, okay, we're, we're two young girls that didn't go to college. We didn't, have the, we didn't have the education resources to know what we were supposed to do. We, like, there's a lot that we didn't have, but what we do have is like this brand and this business that we built legit from like nothing. nothing, you know? And so I think what I had anxiety about was going into a room and then being like, well, how come you guys didn't do X amount? Or how come you didn't do this? I'm like, it's because we just couldn't keep up, keep up with the demand, you know, but if we had, it's a good, yeah, it's like we have a good, bad problem. And I legit had an investor tell me, he was like, well, you know, I just invested in this company and the founder, he used to work at Apple and he grew, I'm making up the name, but he said some big company. And, you know, he grew the company from X amount to X amount. And, you know, even though he doesn't know his product market fit, I just felt comfortable investing in him. But for you guys, you guys have all the pieces of the puzzle, but I just can't, I don't feel comfortable investing in you guys. But what do, what do you think that why was? No. That, uh, so, so here's my question. It's just question. that some people just don't get it. <laughs> here's my question. Mm -hmm. In all of the rooms that you've gone into mm -hmm. to raise capital, mm -hmm. were these white men? It was a Majority. mix. Majority. Well, it was a mix, right? Yeah. It's been a mix. It's, it's also we have it. interesting to me. But were they men in general? Uh, it was a mix, a mix of men and women. Okay. But it's yeah. also interesting to me when there's, um, when there is, because we are, okay, in the optical space, again, there aren't any other um, vertically integrated black, at least there's not any on our scale that yeah. are, are in the amount of optical shops that we're in. And so I think that people, everyone knows Bobby Parker, which we actually met with the founder. Yeah, super down to earth. So the shit, he's so cool, gave us some gems. But we've yeah. met with some black VCs they invest in black companies. And it's interesting to me because they're always, since they're not aware of our industry and they only think of Warby Parker, they're not necessarily jumping the gun. I don't, and like, if I was them, I would put their money into us in like two seconds. You know what I'm saying? If they are support black companies, you know what I mean? I wouldn't yeah. compare us to Warby Parker because you support black companies and you are claiming to be innovative and you're finding the first of whatever in that industry so that, that's been another thing to me where I'm like okay you're it's like you guys are the golden tick and you're like why is nobody picking this up yeah but well, my thing is I'm cool with it because people are going to miss out because I know that what we're building like we're unicorns and we're creating a, um it takes longer when you're creating your own path because we're and for creating. people to get on board to understand because yeah, sometimes totally they cool. just don't understand and yeah, I, yeah. I would say the same thing happened with the app company too is people still aren't on the apps, the mobile apps wave yet. Mm -hmm. And so I know that within the next four or five years, we're going to be the new Wix because we've already had the foundation of the staple point. We've already put over 3,000 apps in the app store. Wow. And so people are not yet realizing that these are the new computers. Mm -hmm. And so if your business is not one of these little icons on here, you're gonna be struggling to keep up with your customer because they're gonna forget about you yeah. if you're not in front of their face at all mm -hmm. times. And so I feel the same way sometimes like when you're so new in innovation or even when it came to Sprinkle of Jesus, I put church in people's pockets. Oh, that's an atrocity. No, people have to go to the church to get the word of God and do this. I'm like, no, I'm putting it like, at 9 p.m. when you're sad and upset and crying and alone, you can pull out the Sprinkle of Jesus app, you can watch, you can get a word, you can get a sermon, you can be encouraged, you can talk to other people. You need a prayer request, not at Sunday at 9 a.m. around everybody. Mm -hmm. Maybe you feel a little uncomfortable. It was hard for people to wrap around in their brains mm -hmm. this innovation of religion and security and this idea of us wanting to know who God is, but yet feeling like we're not someone who's worthy of God's presence. Mm -hmm. it, it was hard for people to understand what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. We put you, church in people's pockets. Because I remember you said, because we're not religious, we're spiritual, but you were saying that you grew up 
Did you making the app make you religious, or were you not religious? Could you tell me about how you weren't, you didn't really go to church like that until you made the app or something? No, I didn't really go to church or anything like that growing up, but I remember one so day. now, are you, like, after, like, Oh, I'm a that? Christian. Okay, got it. Yeah, got Jesus it. is king. <laughs> um, but to me, mm -hmm. that's who I was looking for. Got it. That's who I was looking for, mm -hmm. the people who essentially aren't sure about anything specific, got but it. would say that they're spiritual. Well, spiritual about what? Are you still expanding your spirituality, or are you just saying, hey, I'm spiritual, and I know that there's something greater outside of myself, but what is it that you're trying to explore more? Mm -hmm. And we with Christian, we, we grew up. We just grew up in church. Yeah. I'm talking about Sunday school. We were ushers. We were in the choir. You know, we couldn't praise sing, dance. praise, dance. <laughs> but then you had pastors such and such sleeping with no, sisters I, I such and such. It's, so I think I just had a you had I had bad experience. So and so having foster kids, and she was like physically abusing, abusing them after church. So for me, I think that, and I don't want to like. Because I know that if you have your followers there, if they're no. Christian, I don't want to like put my ways onto no. anybody. But like for, for us, we grew up being very religious. And like for me, I look at religion in, in a different way. So for my personal, my you personal, God. yeah, but I don't pray to white Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus wasn't white. No, I know that, but I'm saying, <laughs> but that's what they teach you. Yeah. But I know, you know, I you know, you know that. What it is. You know what it so. is? I think the word religion in itself, I don't necessarily like the word. Yeah. For example, like I'm a I'm a huge believer and follower of Christ, but somebody mm -hmm. says that I'm religious, I don't like when they call exactly. me that. Exactly. Just because I don't like being trapped in a box, and I also yep. believe that there's a stigma to just the Christian faith in itself, mm -hmm. of when you look at it, it's like, damn, like, I, I have the same beliefs. Like, I've seen pastors, and I went to Catholic school for a long time in my life, mm -hmm. and I've had the same beliefs as, yo, that pastor is like, damn, how is he following the ways of Christ, but he's just got convicted of mm -hmm. messing around with little kids? Or how did mm -hmm. this happen? How did that happen? So for me, it's like, damn, I'm just focusing on my walk with Christ. And that's it. Like, damn, yeah. what's my relationship with him? Yeah. What has he done for me? And whatever my picture and idea is of him, whether he's exactly. black or whether he's white, and whatever he's done for me, whatever path he got me on, that's the route that I'm taking. Mm -hmm. I don't really got the religious aspect. I got more of the relationship aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And that's what it's about. That's a bigger part. Yeah. So I think, I think the religious side of like hearing people talk about, oh, I don't, like they're talking about gay people or they're talking about such and such. So I think growing up, we just had a, a weird experience because I think when we were younger, you get trained. I, got, I was trained to think everybody at church was perfect. It wasn't trained. I just hold on. Let me talk real quick. Um, I just assumed everyone was perfect, and then once I started seeing, you know, imperfections, I was like, I I tied that in with religion, because when you're young, you think that like they're preaching and like teaching you all this stuff, and um. There's a level of brainwashing yeah. that happened too, because even when we were down and we were in the south, and the pastor was like. And he didn't know that we lived in New York, but he was like telling people, like, you know, New York, that's the devil. So I'm like, he's brainwashing people to think that they should stay in Arkansas. And I was like, like and I was like, um, I'm living my dreams in New York, so that's not the devil for me. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. me, Coco, and I have always been very outspoken, but I'm like, don't tell these people that New York's the devil. So now not. you're brainwashing them to think that they can't leave Arkansas. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's the part of of religion that I don't really I rock with. Religion, I think no, in that, that, the that organized is, church. That's organized religion. Yeah, so but I'm saying like, that, if you're going... environment is what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's just the church. That's why when you have an app, you can choose your way of learning without yeah, having no, someone no. else, yeah. without having someone else using their own perspectives in on, experiences. In, in experiences and putting it on to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think the beautiful part is that when you have your, when you can do it on your own, yeah. that's gorgeous, but then you have a human who may or may not be perfect, and they're putting their own perspective, it changes everything. And that's just from our, we didn't have a great experience. Yeah, and no, I totally understand. It's just sometimes, sometimes it seems like as of right now, when we think of Christianity, there's so much negative to say, just because of that idea of organized religion, right? Mm -hmm. But then to me, um, <clears throat> I, I understand people's concern when people are vulnerable and hurting and mm -hmm. in pain or looking yep. for answers of how dangerous it could be when you have a leader who you're trusting to guide you. Mm -hmm. um, but to me also, it's one of those things, it's like, 
you have to focus on the relationship because at the end of the day, God has called imperfect people to lead us out of very broken and bad places. Yep. So it's like, I hate sometimes I like people are like, yeah, like, oh, I don't like the word religion and all this kind of stuff. But it's also been the helpmate to so many people's survival. Yeah, I know. And so, and so it's like we have to find mm -hmm. a, a middle ground. It's like the church has made such a bad name for itself when – Honestly, every single church that I went to and, fo and was focused on worshiping my relationship with the Lord and not with the people, oh my gosh, that thing called corporate worship, the feeling, the intensity, the understanding of how God can come, not saying it has to be in four walls, but right. to me, church is one of the most beautiful things I've ever been a part of for us all to come to one place and praise God together. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact thing when a company can get together and the leader, <coughs> they may not be perfect. You saw Steve Jobs. He was an asshole. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You see Homeboy from WeWork. That's you know, another story. Yeah, oh, we didn't even get there. But like, <laughs> it, was, it was one of those things. It's like, but that doesn't mean, like when you see an extraordinary leader raise up people to be confident and to be at, at whole and at peace. Yeah, a lot of people get it wrong. But a lot of people are getting it right, too. I think church is like, right. to yeah. me, church is everywhere to me. It is. And I think that even when you look at Christ, for me, it's that even from a scriptural standpoint, I think, is he never healed people based off of them saying that they were a Christian. Mm -hmm. He never said that. If you look from a scriptural standpoint, he healed people based off of their faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of your faith, you've been healed. He never once said because you're a Christian, you've been healed, or because mm -hmm. you're a Buddhist, because you're a Muslim, you've been healed. Or because, or because you went to church because, this many Simply times. because of your faith. I don't know what that faith could be. Maybe it's your faith in yourself. Maybe the faith of you believing that you were going to heal, that you were going to be healed, that this is why, this is why you're healed. Mm -hmm. So I just like that concept of just that relationship-wise. But I think I skipped over something that was important was the reason why I asked why there were white men and if there were white men in the room or right. whom, whom were in were in the room was because for me it's like i love i love boss women entrepreneurs right mm -hmm. especially african-american women mm -hmm. i think it's super dope um i love it the idea but i'm also very aware too that in the space of business that there are a lot of opportunities that i'm afforded just being a man then oh, yeah. you mm -hmm. are then y'all are as women yeah right it just in business now in the real world that's totally different being a black man operating in the real world yeah. than in business but in business as a man mm -hmm. i'm afforded many more opportunities i remember we were sitting inside of the office one day right and i won't say who the guy was that came into the office he was a music very exec. well known dude right came mm -hmm. in he wanted help marketing his business and we're sitting in it's me my father-in-law dana He's sitting like right where you are and like I'm right here, Dana's right there. And Magic is right there. So she gets up, she starts breaking down on the board how she can help him with his business, going through the whole process. Every time that she goes to talk, he's cutting her off each mm -hmm. time, like disregarding what she has to yeah. say. But what's funny is every time that I said something, the room got silent. Mm -hmm. Like he was like, he was like this. Did you realize it? No, I realized it immediately. Right. And then that's when I quickly shot my eyes at him, which gave him the eyes of, do what you got to do, take care of it so we can close the deal. Because, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. because, because I already dude, knew what was happening. Like, yeah. I'm not going to fight like, the funk. <coughs> yeah. The dude was like this the whole time, every time I spoke. And it's like, I, I, don't get me wrong, I feel it all the time. Yeah. Like, my wife is extraordinary, but it, there's so many times where, like, every time that I sit up and speak, and a lot of times I, I try to back up now because... I understand now that my energy is just a lot more respected for whatever, and, and, and it has nothing to do with her having a lot more talent or being more qualified. It's just because me as a man, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I understand that. So my question is, how do, and all three of y'all could answer this, how do women that are watching this right now, specifically black women, combat that energy of not being respected in the room mm -hmm. full of men? Right. And you got to pretty much yeah. have enough power and confidence to, to, to really walk in and say, yo, I know what the hell I'm doing. And can, I yeah. walk well, in let, me, let me say one thing that, wait, can I talk real fast? Because you've been talking this whole 
video. So, I love it. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm picking. I'm going to say this real quick. Okay. That we do give each other a pep tap. Yeah. During those times, because we know that we, we know what time it is when we go into those meetings. Yeah. Now you go. But our co-founder, his name is Dwayne, and one thing I love about him is that we used to walk into spaces and people would be like, because again, people always thought that we were talent, so they assumed like, oh, is Dwayne your manager? You guys are talent, and we're like, no. So I freaking love Dwayne because when we go into spaces, you know what Dwayne does? He stays silent, and me and Breezy do all the talking. And there have been times where they'll look at Dwayne like this. Yeah, and such and such and such, you know what Dwayne would do? Stay silent. Coco and Breezy, they make the, they make the decisions. Wow. He, every meeting, yeah. Dwayne stays silent. He might say one or two words. Mm -hmm. and he does that on purpose because people look at us and they assume that like, we don't know what we're talking about. And really, I'm, the one, I'm doing all of our biz dev, but they always put everything on him because he's the man. Mm -hmm. So Dwayne legit is like, and I freaking love him for that. No, he because ego. he has zero ego and like that's been so powerful because when Breezy and I talk like we talk and we articulate ourselves well but like he legit they'll, they'll look at him they'll legit just like look at him and he's like I don't know why you guys are looking at me please pass like yeah, pass that question to Coco mm -hmm. Coco handles such and such you know and I think that's been that's, that was very empowering because in the past me and Breezy used to walk out of meetings and cry and be like, Dwayne, why are they only talking to you? Yeah. You know? You but then once Bree and I got to a point where like we really knew what we were talking about and we knew how to articulate ourselves, he just started being quiet. And that that right there, even with my boyfriend, my boyfriend he is a white man and we go to meetings together. And Julian will say he's like, Babe, I'm gonna be quiet. Cause I don't want I don't wanna walk into this meeting and I don't want people to think that just because I'm with you that like I'm the one who's making all the decisions. So he's like, I'm gonna stay silent. If you need help with any questions, I might just like add on, but I'm gonna be quiet though. And that's what Julian tells me. He's like, I'm gonna stay silent the whole time just so it looks like, so people know that you two are powerful women and that I'm not the one in the room to make things happen. And Julian will stay silent. He's just like the cheerleader. He'll, he adds sprinkles to what Bree and I have to say, but he will never like overcompensate or over like start a conversation on purpose. Mm -hmm. Cause he, yeah. Oh, you go ahead. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. All right, cool. <laughs> but um, I think the bigger part too is that we do give each other pep talks cause we do know that it's there. And um, we have been in a lot of rooms where men, we'll, we'll take a meeting <coughs> and um, they'll assume that we don't know what we're talking about. And they'll actually say it on accident. Yeah. Like there's this meeting that we went to with these guys from like a really big ivory company. We were just talking about you, Dwayne. Yeah, we were just talking about you. Yeah. 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 And um, but we went to a meeting with this like these guys that work for a really big ivory company, and I think they assumed that they felt like they were gonna be putting us onto some knowledge. So they had this level of, um, they're white men, this level of like power. We walked in there. And they actually, they, they pulled out their notebooks, taking notes, and they actually said, like, we didn't realize you guys knew so much. So a lot of times and people... And they got to a point where they are like, hold on, I have to go to the bathroom, but don't say anything until I get back. Like, that's like, how deep the conversation I was. Mm. I love it, though, because I'm like, people are good. I love, under, underestimate me, that's cool, because I know I'm going to come with that shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm very confident in the knowledge that we know. And I know that a lot of people underestimate us based off of how we look. Um, being women, being women of color, all, all that stuff. So I think that I do have confidence, and I, I, it's something like empowering when I know I can flip the room around. Where I'm like, I know that you're looking at me this type of way, and I know that I'm about to snatch the power right back. And there's some moments where we can't snatch the power back, and I feel powerless. There, that happens all the time. Yeah. But I think that we just kind of give each other the pep talk, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, it's man, it's a challenge every day. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to tell you one thing to bring it back to why I think this way. So um, we were, you know, we hired his mom mm -hmm. and we hired his grandmother and they work for the company. Now, me and his mom went through a very difficult situation just because <clears throat> she didn't like me too much in the beginning mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason. She, we just 
she didn't really like me. Right. But I was going out my way. You know, it was our idea to make sure that, you know, if that's what made you happy, babe, like, and you wanted your mom to come work for the company, then let's make it happen. Let's find it in the budget. She had no idea how involved I really was in changing the outcome of her life. But she still treated me very poorly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, I wouldn't say anything. I just left it alone and just kept it moving. It was so difficult to bring someone in and break generational curses backwards. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I mean by that? I, I, I was finding so much resistance and opposition be, from the people older than us. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hold on, like, guys, you don't understand, like, we're doing something extraordinary. We're doing, we're building a business that nobody in our family has ever been able to accomplish. We're changing our family's idea of what success looks like. We're changing each other's financial situation. And for me, I would get so frustrated, but I had a conversation with God and I'm like, yo, why is it so hard to help people? Mm -hmm. But what I realized, it was only really hard to help people from the past, not in mm -hmm. the future. Yep. If we see what we're doing on social media, we are literally rising up a nation of confident entrepreneurs, of millennials, of black women, of black men, believing that they can do whatever. Why is it so hard for me to change my mother-in-law's mind? <coughs> But it's so easy to change the future's mind. Mm -hmm. yep. And so for me, I had this revelation of, God, was I called to break generational curses backwards or was I only called to break generational curses by what I put in the people who are going to be the future? Mm -hmm. So a lot of my actions stem from I'm not looking to change people's minds. Mm -hmm. If you're already one way, I promise my one interaction I just know with the way that we, we groom our team to be confident and strong, that repetition is needed for us to change our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I go in a meeting and I see a man isn't taking to me, or naturally he's seen his mother submit to the father every single day, or I see that you know he's a man in the streets who's only disrespected women, mm -hmm. I know that my one interaction, no matter how much money I told him I've made and how much more money I've made than him, it's not going to click immediately. Uh -huh. So me... Why fight a war that I'm going to lose instead of being a little bit more strategic? I am the Trojan horse if I decide to be. Mm -hmm. And so in that miss when I, I just felt the vibe. I felt that whatever I said, he wasn't going to listen to. Right. So I, I cut my eyes at dawn. We gave each other, you know, we talked to each other through telepathical whatever. Mm -hmm. And that meant to take over. Mm -hmm. That I'll sit game. back. I play the game because mm -hmm. I know essentially and maybe... A lot of us not comfortable saying this, but it's about the money. Mm -hmm. I know that what I'm called to do in helping my community mm -hmm. requires money and resources. Mm -hmm. So what does that say? I'm going to do whatever's necessary to get it to, to accomplish the end goal. So if I have to make myself look dumb for a second, I love it. You know yeah, why? Talking about that. You know why? Because the number one thing that we yep. have on our side, ladies, is that men do not believe we are smart enough to pull it off. Yeah. Go ahead. Don't do what y'all want. I think the difference is that when you're aware that you're playing the game, then it's okay to do it that way. Yeah. But when you're not aware that it's a plan, then we need to make sure that we educate people to like be strong. But yeah, if you if you're aware that you're like, okay, this is strategic, I'm gonna play the game. I me and Breezy got to the point where I was like, when people assume that we're only entertainment and we're not business, that's fine. Wanna we'll know why? Because I'm gonna use my celebrity to raise money. Because at first I was going into these rooms and I'm like, imposter we're just imposter syndrome, just only talking about, oh yeah, we're thinking about data and, you know, talking about numbers. And then a friend of ours who has a beauty company, she just raised four million. She was like, why don't you guys just let them know that you guys are celebrities and why don't you just use that? And I'm like, you know what? In, in my head, I was like, because they're going to think that we don't know about business. Who I'm like, you know what? <laughs> who cares? I'm like, you know what? Let me flip the switch. Yep, we're out here, we know X, Y, and Z, we've been in X, Y, and Z, we've worked with this brand, that person. And we can bring and, this to it. And we can bring this to it, and like, if they, who cares if they think that like we don't know business, because we know we know it. But right. in my head, I thought I had to prove myself and yeah. knowing mm -hmm. certain numbers and knowing how to do certain things. No, let me do what, what works, you know? And if they think that we're X, Y, and Z, that's their own thoughts, and they can find out later who we really are. But you know exactly what you're doing, and I think yeah. sometimes as women, I'm going to be 100% honest. I feel like after our generation, I'm just letting y'all know, we raising a whole different kind of woman. 
Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just letting y'all know what we're oh, doing, absolutely. and I couldn't, I can't even imagine when we are actually starting to have kids. Oh, we kids are raising a whole different type of woman, the level of yeah. confidence, and then for them yeah, to be able to look up to people like us with the money to go ahead and invest in them. So my thing is, do I fight a war that? Huh, I'll just let it die off. To be honest, just I, I don't even care. I'm not. I, I could. Ex I'd rather instead of making someone understand who is literally. Ready for this? Instead of attempting to force someone to understand and trying mm -hmm. to get someone to understand who's just hell bent on me, them not understanding me, why yeah. even waste my time when I can give that to someone who I know that if I just 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 spend a little bit of time with, a little bit of energy of just going ahead and speaking life into them and showing, girl, you don't gotta explain it to me. I already know who you are. Right. But what are we gonna do together? To me, I rather exhaust my energy <coughs> that way. And so, if this situation, I'll use my dad. I'll use Don. You know what I mean? I already know what it's hitting for. But like you said, in business, it's not really so much about proving the point when you know you're taken care of at home. Mm -hmm. And that's what people think. It's like even with the celebrity part of things, people just all just stay trying to prove a point that you're the smartest, that you're you're, the, you're the, the, the best, that you got the most money. It's bro. I'm doing this for such a different freaking cause. I could care less if you don't understand at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as I came here to get what I came for, mm -hmm. then we good. And yeah. I feel like a lot more women would stop looking like they're crazy or looking. We were just talking about Kanye West. Mm -hmm. I said I hated. I, I am so disappointed mm -hmm. in the way that our culture does interviews with him. Mm -hmm. They're sitting there combating with him, mm -hmm. trying to trying to co-sign or get him to flip or act crazy. They're yeah. trying to get him in this mode of being defensive. Instead of, yo, this man is so extraordinary. Why y'all not mm. having conversations with him about what he knows or yeah. about how he thinks or when he went to Wyoming, what is it that he saw and what he felt? What, how does God speak to him? But y'all putting him in such an uncomfortable space yeah. trying to make it out to seem like he's crazy or something. Yeah. No, he's just different. Yeah. And to me, it's frustrating, and I, and I wish more women understood, like, honey, I know who you are, but it doesn't matter if they don't. Yep. Still do what you got to do, yeah. and you do it by any means necessary, whatever strategy, whatever game plan, whatever, whatever playbook you have. that's why women have. are the shit, because you have strategy behind yeah. anything we do. Absolutely. Like, well, I, I, I'm we're in, the jam. I'm in, I'm in total greens. I'm I in play total the game greens. all cats. So I have a question, so um, mm -hmm. just to give some context, so I have an 11-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. and um. When I was reading your story, one thing you guys really did uh, preach on is like uh, the trauma you went through when mm -hmm. you were younger. So one thing I'm noticing with her now, she's growing older, uh, and that's your parents did with y'all. Y'all said they let y'all be creative, let y'all go to school how y'all wanted. They really supported y'all. So <laughs> with me, um, my daughter, she is really coming to a sense of now, like her creative part is like her hair. She just mm -hmm. does whatever with her hair. And sometimes mm -hmm. I look at her, I'm like, <laughs> like, come on, Zay. Like, but um, and I used to fear like not letting her go to school because I didn't want people to tease her or somebody like mm -hmm. teacher say something. Like my friends <coughs> always say like, oh, why? Like, don't let her go to school like that. You do her hair because I, I I usually do her hair. But I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just let her do her hair, do whatever she wants. She watched YouTube, get her own little designs. Yeah, I love um, it. And I haven't had that day yet where she just came home crying to me. You know what I mean? Where I gotta really console her. Yeah. Um, but it seems like during that time you guys had each other. So, you know, mm -hmm. either one of y'all can answer this question. Um, Coco, what was breezy for you during those times? And breezy, what was Coco for you well, during those hard times? I think for us, we're twins. And it's funny because I've recently been watching a lot of like documentaries about twins because we have certain traits that people that aren't twins have or we'll never and that we'll never understand. So um, give us one example. What so is one example is that as a twin, not all twins, but a lot of twins, we have like, we don't know how to go through certain emotions on our own. Cause you're so used to always having that person with you. And I thought I was weird. And so I did, last week, I like watched three twin documentaries, read like five articles. I'm like, oh, this is a twin thing. I thought I had my own problems. I was going through this like emotional battle because Breezy was out of town last weekend. And I'm like, what do I do? I'm feeling emotional, but I don't know how to I don't know how to like work through this, but I learned that it's a twin thing. And like, if you grow up having a twin, most twins don't know how to, one, go through certain emotions alone. Two, it's difficult for a lot of twins that are, are close like us, because I can't speak for all twins, but twins that have such a close connection, it's difficult for them to like make new friends because when you're a twin, you're so used. Yeah, but the, from what I've learned, um, 
you're so used to this like quick connection and it and so with with in reality it takes time for you to like build deep conversations with people and so in my past i would be like this person's having a surface conversation with me like they shouldn't be my friend but after reading those articles i learned that with twins you're so used to like an automatic deep combo that you feel like it's hard for you to make friends because it takes more rounds to become close with someone and so um yeah i think that me and Breezy, we probably wouldn't be who we are today if we didn't have each other because we did go through a lot of like bullying and and like people talking about us. But since we had each other to like really lean on, it was so helpful. And we still have each other. But now so we're are like you telling him to pop out another baby. <laughs> so he no, no, but a twin, a, no, it's more of a twin. Well, what Coco is for me yeah. is she's my sister, business partner, best friend. Ride or die. Like, <coughs> we have so much fun together. That's my yeah. home girl. Yeah. Like, seriously. And um, she's also just someone who, like, boosts my confidence up. Even when I, like, first grew my locks, my hair was so short. I know I did not look cute, but she told me I look beautiful every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm You know that, that not cute stage? I had a not cute stage, but she told me I look beautiful every single day because she knew that I wasn't feeling 100% confident. So like having that person that when you walk out the house being like, girl, we got this, like we're gonna kill the game today. Like we always tell each other that every, every day. single day. There's not one day that goes by. If I see her kind of feeling kind of down or overwhelmed, I'm like, girl, you got this. I'm like, girl, you look fly as hell today. Like, and that's like a good and bad thing. Cause then you, when you don't have each other, you have to learn how to, if you don't feel cute, yeah. <laughs> then you have to like figure it out yourself and be like, is my outfit cute? You know, so going through the going through those everyday battles are like I don't know. I'm walking out the house without Breezy's approval, so we're learning how to be more like individuals. So if you were to look at your sister right now and say, "I'm thankful for you for this," what mm -hmm. would it be? Mine would be I'm thankful for you, Breezy, for being so outspoken, and um, Breezy just doesn't care you're not talking to me you're talking to oh me. okay so breezy mm -hmm. i'm thankful for you for being so outspoken and not caring because you inspired me to be not so uptight yeah and you i'm grateful for you being um which irritates the hell out of me that you're very um you're um not con you're not a micromanager but you're what is it you're overprotective so I'm grateful for it in a way because you end up always being right. But um, it used to make me want to just like help me be the risk taker that I am because I always want, wanted to like fall on my face and do it by myself. But I am appreciative of you being like super protective and looking out for me, even though it's annoying sometimes. And you're motherly and you're always over analyzing the situation. So I'm appreciative of that also. How does her protection make you feel? Uh, her protection makes me feel annoyed sometimes because I just want to, like the rock star that I am, I just want to fail on my own and figure it out on my own. But then on another sense, it also makes me feel like I depend on her <coughs> in certain instances where I know that Coco got my back. Or if I know if I don't know an answer, Coco got it. So I think that the balance of the two, I think I used to depend on her protection so much where um, I wasn't learning on my own, but now that I have the balance of both, I like it better that way. Because now I, I love when Coco be because like, again, I'm very outspoken, so I love when I can see her kind of open up, because everyone knows Coco for being a little uptight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, girl, loosen, loosen up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love it when I see that I'm inspiring her to either like speak her, her like use her voice and um, to speak up on certain areas. I'm like, okay, girl. I see I'm rubbing <laughs> off on you a little bit. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good balance, honestly. If it was too much of me, it would be crazy. If it was, it was too, too much, much of her, you wouldn't be going nowhere. Anywhere at all. Well, I just want to say thank y'all. Y'all inspire me, and I was oh, so excited to like come talk to y'all and hang out with y'all, and I just thank y'all for letting us into your, you know, your second home. This, oh, your business is your you. home, and you. seeing y'all win means a lot, not just to me, but to the people who are looking up to us and coach. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't do this alone. You can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. It's like that conversation we were having at the dinner of like, yeah, we truly have to support each other where mm -hmm. it actually counts. Not like a, yep. oh, 
great job, mm -hmm. super proud of you, comment, but where are the women who are like, no, 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 no. real support is mm -hmm. caring about the outcome of y'all lives, y'all business, and y'all company, and what is it that I cannot do to advance what, if, what your mission and your vision, and yeah. I just want y'all to know y'all got me, what, whatever y'all need, I'm here to help. I already told her about getting an app for y'all, and <laughs> um, just please let me know however I can help. I, if we're not useful, we're useless, and I don't want to be useless to y'all in any capacity. I'm not afraid of, you can ask me for anything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, should I say this? Or does she, and they think that, like, you know, we're using, <laughs> no, please. I wanna be so drained by the end of that I live this life. We have too much information that the rest mm -hmm. of our counterparts don't have yeah. that need what we're doing. Yeah. And really just need so, to see yeah. it. And right now we're living in this world of content. You feel me? Yeah. We're living in the world of content where if you don't see it, we don't believe it. Yep. Like, I need people to see y'all. Like, mm -hmm. I'm doing this with my family. But for two sisters to rise up and build a business together and have each other's back, like, mm -hmm. yo, that's that's extraordinary. We got we got families out here that's not even talking to each other. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, it's true. whether y'all twins or not, that doesn't mean y'all had to get along. It's mm -hmm. true. Doesn't mean y'all had to love each other out loud. Doesn't yep. mean that y'all y'all didn't y'all mm -hmm. wasn't sacrificing and having each other's back. Like we have as as African Americans. We have our families out there broken mm -hmm. with non-supportive mm -hmm. parents, without people to say, you know, I believe in you enough to not hold you back. Like, yep. we don't got that in y'all stories. I don't know how many times y'all actually said it, spoke it, spoke yeah. life into it. Like, just because your story is in the past, you need to speak life into your story so that it transcends to other people. Please mm -hmm. do yeah. not stop, guys. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't it. stop. Thank you. you know what I love, though? I love the idea of, <clears throat> like come into an office and like when people think of an entrepreneur business owner mm -hmm. they expect that like you walk into somebody's office they got like a thousand employees mm -hmm. office is like the whole New York street and that's mm -hmm. the only way that you're actually like successful yeah not realizing that successful entrepreneurs business owners especially those that are still on the rise and mm -hmm. building this thing that we've never seen before yeah i love this environment right <laughs> it's so like, real this is, this is like if that phone rings you heard coco's voice change and she's rebecca hi i'm rebecca <laughs> hi, I'm <laughs> Brizzy, i wear for real what? Like, I like I'm, I'm I just been looking around the whole time. Just watching my while I'm, this is my favorite part. Like even yeah. our office, our office is not huge. Ours is same same size. My this is my favorite part of it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just glad that like I was able to come in here at um, at the at the my favorite part of it. Yeah. Because I know that in it's ten years, yeah. At ten years, in ten years, when this is like. 10 times this size, that's yeah. not going to be the favorite part no more. Oh, it's like, yeah, okay, exactly. I, we missed the part of the ground level where y'all yeah. had the... It yeah, was just four y'all in you know here. <laughs> I love it. This, this is the yeah. most inspiring part to me right We're here. really proud of y'all because we know how hard it is too. <laughs> so really? we are yeah. so proud of y'all. Oh, I'm proud of y'all. Yeah, seriously. And how is it working with your partner? Like, Oh, the best thing that's <laughs> ever happened to me. Do you wow. know when you turn off? Like, do you ever turn, turn off? off like, when do you have personal conversation versus like work related conversations? Do y'all ever turn off? Well, no, I, well, my boyfriend, he and I like talk about business all day. And so there's I think times. Because Coco has me to talk to business. So for her and her, her man, like, she doesn't want to talk about business all day. Yeah, so sometimes I'm like, can we take a break and just like go on a date and like, I want to know how your day was? Because you and I are each other. Because me and Bree. But wait, wait, what did you just so say? Guess say it again? No, I'm like, can we just take a break? I, I just want to know how your day was. Guess what? I know how his day was. Because I was right there. all the time. So and so for, so for us, it's we are together, together all, the time. all day, yeah. Yeah. every day, every single day, even when we're touring or we're going, we're with each other. And so for us, it works because... I don't think people understand that entrepreneurship isn't a thing we get to cut off at nine to five. Mm -hmm. Y'all most creative ideas come in the middle of the night when y'all call each other and be like, yo, guess what just happened? Or y'all with each mm -hmm. other like, yo, turn on that damn light real quick. I gotta draw this out because I got this idea in my head. Yeah. And so for me, I am so blessed and so honored to have someone mm -hmm. that at any point in time does not stifle Your my creativity and yeah, my yeah. ideas. That's and important. People probably think 
van when he first like came and joined the family he probably thought we were crazy ask him he since he's the storyteller and he is the person behind the lens mm -hmm. he's seen us go from zero to a hundred in yeah. personal and guess what most 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 of the time they were about business we don't fight how to love each other we don't fight on how to get along we right. fight on no i think my idea is better and no yeah. my idea is better and no, no mine's more profitable so i guess mine is the winner yeah. so it's more so we find ways to evolve as individuals and continue right. to grow but that just may not be the same for everyone and i understand right. that's not but once again we are on a certain mission and so if somebody were to whisper into your ear right now and say hey i know it's going to get tough with you and your sister but i promise if you just give it 10 more years of consistent hard work, mm -hmm. I promise I will make you guys the largest optical oh, this brand. Is the thing is, me and Breezy had no problem. No, I'm just giving oh, an example for anybody else who's dealing with their family. Oh, okay. Because, I'm like, because, girl, I don't know how to do it. Because what happens is, people don't see the end goal, mm -hmm. so they're willing to let the process um, mess up and, and bring up to chaos the plan. Yeah. And so my thing is, if I'm just imagining God whispering in Michael Jordan's ear saying, hey, nobody's going to be here with you. Yeah. Go outside every single day and don't stop till you make this jump shot at least 50 times row mm -hmm. in a row. And I'm going to make you the greatest basketball star ever right. known in history. If God were to whisper that into your ear, would that greatly change how you do today? If you knew the outcome. Right. But as entrepreneurs, we're creating the outcome every single day. Yeah. So we need to be those voices, and he's that voice for me. That no, we gotta stick to the plan. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I think with me and Breezy, I think we make like our relationship is so beautiful that sometimes I don't understand how family members don't get along. But since Breezy and I work together, work together best, friends. best friends, like we don't know what running a business without each other would be. And that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Like, I, I know that because we, we hold each other accountable for different responsibilities. So I know that if Coco yells at me about fucking up, getting something wrong, she has I mean, the right. because she loves you too. Yeah, so it's not she's like right. Like I, I get it. You know what I, what I mean? So I think that so many people put their emotions into business when in reality it's like you're supposed to hold me accountable for things. I'm supposed to hold you accountable. So. Yeah. Well, we love you guys and we want to support y'all in any way. So oh, don't ever be afraid you. to reach out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is wonderful. And I was on the site too, right? <clears throat> uh huh. And I was about to order a pair of glasses, and um, I turned all of my sunglasses into my Eye seeing glasses. glasses. Yeah. And I was wondering if I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I was gonna like reach out to you guys before I went and did it somewhere else, or I don't know if you guys well, outsource so we, it to so go. So we we used to have an API on our website, then we took it off because it was a test. But um, there's a a partner that we use called Lensable that if you wanted to get your prescription there because the eye care practices a lot of them like overcharge and on Lensable they're under a hundred dollars if you want to get your prescription but it's crazy because when you go to an eye care practice they'll charge like 200 to almost 300 dollars sometimes well i go to but the place in the hood so oh, they, they, not do that they, they they like i'll bring like i just oh, bought like okay, good. Adidas, pradas and yep. so that i keep the lens at the same time so in the summertime i can pop them back in yeah um i'll go in every <coughs> single pair of my glasses i'm known so for having funky glasses all the time mm -hmm. and they'll like 60 bucks okay good and they'll switch it out okay good because the other places don't get oh well, i mean whatever they will like mark it up like really Two or three times, so that's no, good that you. Really quick, I just want to try some on. Yeah, please to do. To see which yeah. ones I like the most. I really like these. And I like the weight of these too. Oh, they wow. Uh, yeah, cause look at that. Yeah, like, these are nice, uh, right? No, I like those better. If you guys want to create a his and hers collection, we will totally be your models for you. These girls clean. These girls fit my face. Like, and all our eyeglasses have blue light lenses, so they they can count as computer glasses. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these girls fit my Wait, face. These are perfect. Perfect vibe. Right, this is like this is a, this a Philly vibe for sure. You know what I'm saying? I gotta have the Philly vibes. You know, definitely. Why you look so Philly? Why you look so Philly?